Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper, and today we are out at the dragline crane because we finally got it apart. Um, this was a major job. We had to drop a whole gear case. Um, there's a shaft and a big bevel gear, but these are what we were after. So these are the basically the axle shafts, the brake drums, and the sprocket, and this rides in a bearing, and there's actually bearings inside and a shaft that comes almost all the way out. So that's why this was such a big job, but this sprocket, is the one we destroyed getting it off the semi. We were, it was done for. That's as far as we got. And this one isn't far behind it. So let's get them in the shop and start machining those off and then we'll put new ones on. Okay, I got it set up here in the lathe. I got the steady rest on the bearing surface out here. I got it in the chuck on that end and everything indicates out good. My, my assumption is, is how this thing is actually turned is this is welded to this shaft here, and then they machine everything to match because everything is perfect there, but this sprocket bounces up and down, um, and you'll see that when I start it up. Now, these are the new sprockets that I got. These are 140 heavy, and uh, I got with the extended because these were what I found cheap on eBay. Um, they're a Martin sprocket, so they're a good unit, and we're just gonna turn this off and turn a step on it and then we'll shrink fit, bore and shrink fit this on and then weld it. And that should fix these problems. All right, I'm just gonna run this slow because of the interrupted cut. And we're just gonna whittle this down to a finished size that we can work with. She's coming down. We're getting down there um, to where we won't have an interrupted cut anymore and it's cutting really nice. It's good steel. So this will weld up nice when I get to that point. through our interrupted cut, now we can start really cutting this down. We're starting to make some pretty serious heat here, so I'm gonna just put the coolant on it and let it cool as we go. Now these chips are hot. And we'll keep whittling it away. So I'm not running super fast just because the shape and size of everything and I wanna just make sure I don't have problems. Because this is irreplaceable at this point. So 
we cleaned up good there, but we got a ways to go back here. But I mean, we cleaned up most of the way around. But I want this thing cleaned up 100%, so when I shrink on the sprocket and then weld it, we'll, be, we'll, we'll definitely have 100% engagement. I want this thing as good as I can get it. So what I'm actually gonna do next is measure the distance of the sprocket, how far I need to come in, and I'll turn it to a step. And that way it'll give me a positive engagement. It'll stop right where I want it. All right, looks like my sprocket is two and a quarter thick. So we will turn this down to two and a quarter. We'll take another pass, maybe two, and we'll get it to a size that I want to work with, and then we'll go from there. All right, I sped up to 180 RPM, and we're just gonna take it in to a two and a quarter inches, and we'll measure it, see where we're at. I'm taking 100 thousandths off of this, so hopefully that cleans up 100%. I don't wanna go too deep as to thin the wall of that tube too much. It's like I got 100% cleanup. Actually, there's a little divot right there. But I'm not gonna worry about that. That'll be just fine. Um, like I said, I didn't wanna thin up the wall of the tube too much. And as it is, I may just only weld the outside edge, but we'll shrink fit it onto the sprocket, or the shaft here. Three point four seven six. Um, that's what I'm going to bore the sprocket to. We should be good there. I'll just check it in two spots just to be sure. But with a shrink fit, we should be fine. Yeah, perfect. We won't have any problems here. So since we're at our size that I want, I'm just going to go ahead and put a chamfer on there for the weld. That's enough for that side and then the other side I'll go deeper and we should get pretty good. I don't want to, like I said, go in too deep into the part and lose any uh, structural integrity we got here. So that looks good. Okay, we're over here at the Monarch. I got the sprocket chucked up. I'm going to leave that chucked in the Lion for now just in case we need to, to fine tune anything there. If uh, anything happens, we'll be, I, I think we'll be fine. I've done this many times before. So I just chucked up on the sprocket on the backside so I'm not on the teeth. And uh, I already indicated it, we're running spot on. It's true this way and this way. So no wobble, no run out, no nothing. So perfect, we'll, we'll get, get going and bore this thing. So I picked this drill up off eBay and we're gonna give it a shot. Um, it doesn't look like it's drill, you know, ground perfectly, but we'll just see what happens. And I got to have it in a taper adapter because that's a Morse taper five and my tail stock's a four. So let's go ahead and see if this will cut. opened it up good for the boring bar. Now let's get in there and bore this thing.
right, let's see where we're at. Right, we'll take a rough measurement with our caliper here. 2.910-ish, and we are actually going to 3.9470. 3.470, that'll give me about a six thousandths shrink fit. So we'll go ahead and bore this out a little further and, and we'll stop short, cool it, and then take a couple finish passes. While that one is cooling, I'm gonna, that sprocket's cooling, I'm gonna set this guy up and do the same thing. We're just replacing both sprockets because quite honestly, I don't wanna have to take this apart again. Off. We'll take a 50 thousandths and then measure it and see where we're at. Alright, go in with the inside micrometer here. And I calibrate this every time I use it to a, a regular micrometer that I use, um, which are checked to standards each time. You've got to check this stuff and verify it. Otherwise, you're going to be off, especially when you're trying to do something like this. 422, and we're going to 470. All right, we got 48 thousandths to go. I'm going to take 46, and we're going to just take a light little cut and check it. Looks like I got five thousandths more to take, so we'll just take it to 50. Okay, so I had, I was five thousandths shy, so I'm gonna, I took it into 50 this time. We're gonna go right in, go past where we stopped, and we'll check it again and see how we look. We're close, real close. I'm gonna take it to 52, and we're gonna run with that. We're still gonna be undersized, so that's fine. right on that's right where we wanted to be so we're at 3.470 I'm gonna put a healthy chamfer here for our weld and I'll just uh, run in with the boring bar and knock that off in the back a little bit because I got this angle here I can clean that up
And I'm just going to polish out the little burr in there from chamfering. So when we put it together, we don't have problems with that. There. Now that's ready to go on the shaft. All right, so we got them both ready, both turned, and I stuffed paper down inside. And what we are actually going to do is we are going to make some dry ice. And I already got the sprockets up on the heat table here, um, warming those up. And over here is my bottle of CO2 and my dry ice maker. So let's uh, get the dry ice made and get that thing packed in there. All right, so all this is is a CO2 tank with a drip tube. And I got this nozzle and this bag, and that collects it. We'll go ahead and open her up. And... A little more. There we go. Got a full bag of dry ice. Now the reason I decided to go with dry ice instead of liquid nitrogen is because of the region I'm in. Um, getting supplies is very difficult and quite honestly, I can make dry ice for a heck of a lot cheaper than I can run to town and buy one block of dry ice. I'll just go ahead and I'm going to fill the cavity up with dry ice here. You definitely want gloves on because this stuff is cold. I don't want to pack this thing full. So we're just going to go ahead and let that cool. And uh, I'm going to wrap it with the, uh, the blanket, the welding blanket to keep it cold. And once, uh, once everything's down to temp here and up to temp on there, then we'll slip them together and should go together well. Well, I got a little extra dry ice here. I'm going to put it in this bottle and we'll blow it up because who doesn't like explosions? All right, so I didn't like the way that was, was uh, cooling before, so I put this cardboard box around it, added some more... Uh, dry ice around it, and boy, whatever this tube is, it's not shrinking. I'm still right there. So I just heated up those a little more, and we're gonna go ahead and drop them on, and hope like hell this goes. This is always nerve wracking doing this kind of stuff. I had her just cocked just a little bit and she didn't want to drop. She's still cooling. That'll bite in though and it won't go anywhere. There it is, she grabbed right in. That ain't going anywhere. Now let's get the other one on. Well, that was nerve wracking. Always is when you're doing a shrink fit because if it goes wrong, it can go wrong quickly. So we're gonna let this uh, cool off and then we'll go ahead and I'll TIG weld these so they can't go anywhere. And then this project is done, ready to go back in the crane.
Well, there they are, all done, all welded up. We'll get them back in the, on the shaft and back in the gear case and back up in the crane. I'm not gonna film that because that is a nightmare and a half. But they're all fixed, ready to go back in. So until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.